Hey everyone, in this pipeline video we're taking a look at how you can take iClone original content, do some alterations to it, then export it to Maya and adjust the material settings for an ideal render. Start off by creating and modifying your character in iClone and applying some animations. To modify the look of your character, one thing you can do is launch your character's texture maps in your favorite image editing software such as Photoshop. The first step for animation can be to apply an automatic lip sync to your character then refine it by entering the timeline and modifying the individual phonemes to your own specifications. Once you're done that, you can complete the process with some facial puppet animation. Whenever you have a body animation applied to your character, you can always adjust and refine it using keyframe editing in Human IK. After you've done some basic animations, you'll want to set up your scene in iClone. Certain characters like the one here also contain accessories that can be animated individually like you see here. The new Motion Plus format allows you to bake path and look at constraints into your final animation. You can find tutorials on how to use these on our YouTube channel. Once that's all set up, check out your preview in iClone. Now that you got everything set up in iClone, it's time to bring it into the CG software of your choice. Use the convenient Edit in 3D Exchange button to launch your character in 3D Exchange. Then simply select the area of your timeline which contains the animation you want to export and combine it together as a Motion Plus file in 3D Exchange. From there, you can preview the character in motion exactly how it will look in FBX format, then add it to the perform list for export. Again, make sure you set the target tool preset for the CG software you're exporting to in order to avoid any unwanted material and structural issues. Once you're in Maya, go ahead and import your FBX. Make sure that you choose the settings shown to get the correct import. After that, go ahead and preview the animation in Maya once the import is finished. Then you'll want to move on to the next step, which is adjusting the shaders in Maya to get the best looking result. You can do a render test to start, and from there adjust the material shading setup for whatever renderer you prefer. How you do this is totally up to you, and depends a lot upon the character you're using as well. You'll also want to enable subsurface scattering to refine even further. Finally, move on to composing your scene in Maya. After a little test preview, you may want to adjust your render settings. You can feel free to use the settings we're providing here, however keep in mind that not every project will be the same, and you may want to make other adjustments. Notice we're using Motion Blur to give the animation that extra dynamic push. Once you finish your render settings, you're good to go. Here's the final product.